thank you, thank you, folks, and a good evening to you. Are you ready for some rock and roll? I hope so, because that's all we got. We're going back, way back. How far back, you ask? I'm glad you asked that. 1959 was a good year. I was with a group called The Crest back then. Now, you folks don't look old enough to remember that far back. Am I right? Well, let's find out, okay? Put on those thinky caps. Here we go. The sun, tell her she's the only one. Guide her with your lovely light back into my arms tonight. There's trouble in paradise, and heaven's not the same. The angels sit and cry, they say it's such a shame. With it like I love to be, just like before. be performing around the country and uh, I'd meet up with the group called the Dell Satins. Every once in a while we'd perform in the same uh, venues. And uh, through the years uh, they had gone through a couple of lead singers and asked me if I would join them. And that had to be, oh, maybe 1965. Uh, I joined with the Dell Satins and uh, we were performing for maybe two years. We didn't have a band behind us, we just had a guitarist and a drummer and uh, decided that we wanted to form a bigger group. So we held auditions uh, on Long Island, where we came from, and uh, found a horn group, a seven-piece horn group, and uh, decided to merge. And uh, that's how the Brooklyn Bridge formed. Now, speaking of angels, we did a lot of that back in the old days. I can hear them now. Can you hear them? Listen.
so much. Thank you. We were looking for music and something to express ourselves with back in the 50s, but it was uh, about love. You know, as you mentioned earlier when we were talking, uh, being in love, you know, being out of love, losing love, finding love, but it was love. Once in a while you'd have a song about a tragedy, but all the music was happy back then. It was happy, it was something that uh, anyone could sing with and uh, just enjoy. This next song was meant for lovers. We have any lovers out there? You're in love, are you? Okay, this is for you. Oh. Now you're in love, right? <laughs> uh, the Del Sands, we belonged to a, a social group who played a lot of basketball going through our town. And we went to this neighborhood house in New York City. And uh, in between uh, periods, we used to do up and sing in the bathrooms. And we were looking for a place to find a little echo. We walk into this gym, and we see this guy sitting on the stage all by himself, plucking away on his guitar and it was Johnny Maestro. We were looking for an, a newly singer at the time, and we were working at a club in New Jersey, and Johnny happened to be there without the crest, just as a, a, a band. And we loved, and I always liked the way Johnny sang, he had a terrific voice, so uh, we had approached him at the time he wanted to be interested in joining us as uh, lead singer for Del Satins, and at first he said no, and then we got in touch uh, with his, his manager called us later, said that they were interested and he wanted to come join the group. And uh, the influence of Johnny was tremendous. Even though we didn't really know each other, our careers paralleled. We had the same musical coach, the same record people, Coet Records. Uh, this before even Johnny became a Brooklyn Bridge. And uh, the first song that, or one of the first songs we did as the Del Santons were two, Sweetest One and my Juanita. So the Johnny and the Crest, basically Johnny influenced musically tremendously.
and to this day. <laughs> Brooklyn, New York was the place. The Crest and I recorded our very first record back then. My Juanita. Need you help out there? Can you take your two hands and do this for us? Come on, everybody, join in. They're good, John. They're good. Maybe 10 years after that, that we formed the Brooklyn Bridge and recorded our very first album. We, uh, we all kind of liked the same kind of music uh, back in those days, and each one of us would share our likes and dislikes in, in music, and uh, that's, I think, how the, that's how the sound of the Brooklyn Bridge formed. Uh, we all had different sounds and different groups and different styles of music that we enjoyed, and the combination of that whole thing, I think, is what created our sound. Buster's Dream was a great musical harmonic piece of music that took a little time to learn. Um, and there was a challenge for that time. We had our vocal sounds, which came from the 50s. They called doo Up today, but we had that vocal sound. They had a contemporary sound with horns. And uh, we thought the combination would be very interesting. Uh, they had, no one had done that before. Okay, so we, uh, we combine the smooth harmonies with the hard rhythm section and horns. And that's how we derive the sound. It uh, wasn't actually uh, a sound we decided uh, to uh, invent, you know. We just did it. We sang, they played. Together, we made the Brooklyn Bridge sound. This is the rain that falls as far as that girl can see The earth that I walk upon Is heavenly 
Blessed is the love I bring to her I know what it means to her In the eyes of that girl I everything to her But what happens when the statue on the pedestal Comes tumbling to the ground Sorrow on a face when she thinks I let her down. And what happens when she finds the world is real, not a fairy land at sea? That I'm a man of moves and breeds, breaks my stakes, not a superman. Blessed is the strength she finds in me And the weakness she'll never see I'll go before the image friend of ours, and probably yours too. The gentleman used to come from a place they called the Bronx. Yeah, we're talking about Dion DiBucci. Now, Dion started back about the same time that I did. He started with the Belmonts, and they had a couple of records, and split up to go their separate ways. But Dion started recording as a soloist, solo artist. And on all of those records, he used another group to do all the background voices a group who called themselves the Dell Satins. Now that's a connection, the connection between Dion and the Brooklyn Bridge, the Dell Satins. Dell Satins, of course, is a group that backed up Dion after he left his group, the, uh, the Belmonts. And uh, they were on most of his hits as a soloist. Uh, and we had cross paths quite often during the years uh, up until the point that, uh, that I started singing with them. But that's the connection with Dion and myself. Dion, we both uh, started performing solo at the same time. Okay, he split with his group, I split with mine, and we would be uh, doing record hops and things like that uh, together. And we have two of the original Dell Satins right here at the Brooklyn Bridge. You wanna meet them? I hope so. Okay, I'm gonna start back here. Pay attention. I'm gonna start on my right. Would you please say hello to Fred Ferrara, former Dell Satins. Say hi, Fred. Hi, Fred! Yeah, they love you, Fred. Gentlemen on my left, also a former Del Satin. Would you please say hello to Les Couchy? Say hi, Les! Try it again. Hi, Les! You're getting better. Listen, folks, we need your help. That's right. We want you to clap your hands. Everybody put your hands together now. 
You folks upstairs, come on and clap your hands, yeah. Just a little bit louder now, well. You know that I, I got a girl and a ruby is her name. But I love her just the same
this country, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. You guys feeling all right? A little out of breath, are you? Oh, you know what? Catch your breath a little bit. Step, step. I fell in love with you and step by step It wasn't hard to do, kiss by kiss and hand in hand That's the way it all began Soon we found perfect plan for love Side by side She took a lover's walk, word by word She had a lover's talk, one word led to another We had a day, stayed up late, I walked you home, we're all alone, seven step, we took a chance, one kiss and true romance, step by step, we climbed to heaven's door and step by step, she still invited more than you promised, faithfully, all your love belonged to me, now we know we'll always be
I never thought back in those days that I'd still be singing this song at 49 years old. Right? <laughs> uh, people come to remember. Okay, they're, they're there for memories. You know, they, they don't really applaud the songs or the performance. They're applauding their memories. They hear it and they say, oh wow, I can remember. You know, they're bringing back some good memories for me. Uh, we were riding on a, about three or four big hit records. We did the uh, Ed Sullivan show. We did a variety of big shows at the time, Hollywood Palace. Um, we did a uh, tour throughout the country, um, constantly in the studio, re-recording. It was just a very active time, musically, in our careers. Okay, where should we go from here? What do you think? 1968, going back to our first album again. And another song, another gold record, we hope you remember. The hours before the morning, walking home I pass a door And I send a special prayer up to the room on the second floor Before my mind is ever through, my body takes me home And I need to have a love, because I've been too long alone So won't you welcome me love And I promise I'll be good I'll play up on the rules Just like every lover should In times when I will fail her And we'll let each other down I'm sure that we can make it Just as long as you're around So won't you welcome me We do have probably one of the best lead singers out there. I'm very proud of that. And we concentrate because of that. And he sets a standard, and we try to reach that standard musically. Uh, from, you'll get an idea from the last album we did called Peace on Earth. The standards are very, very, very high, uh, recording-wise and musical arrangements and musical accomplishments. And uh, that's what made the major combination is that. You know, they like the songs, they, we do the best we can, and and we show up. It's a great song, a great song. Uh, when I first heard it, I didn't hear, of course, Bill, uh, Bobby Hatfield's version first. We heard uh, Al Hitler back in the 50s when it was recorded and featured in a motion picture. And uh, it was a great tune, and uh, I always enjoyed singing it. And when I heard Bobby's version of it, which was phenomenal, man, he was a great singer. He, uh, he did some things with his voice, was phenomenal. Uh, I liked to sing it in his style and always did and we used to perform it uh, on stage and we did, uh, did record it on one of our albums too. But it's a wonderful tune and every time we do it I mean people just love it because of the song mostly I think. I mean I enjoy doing it, I think I do a good job with it 
Uh, but the Righteous Brothers, great singers. I always loved them. The song we're about to do for you now dates way, way back. It was originally recorded by a gentleman named Al Hibbler. And it was featured in a motion picture back in the 50s. And since then, it's been recorded and re-recorded many times. And my favorite version was done by a gentleman who we just lost last year, Bobby Hatfield. And uh, thank you. And I'd like to uh, do that version for you now. back to 1968 again. That's what Les said. You know, this song that uh, we did on our second album was a song that uh, told the story, as most songs do, a love story too, again, as most songs do, but this one was a little different, okay? 
story about two people and two people. Okay? Yeah, they cheating on each other. We try to stay away from that type of a song, uh, but we had no choice back in those days. You know, they, they gave you what they wanted you to record. And the, the storyline, you know, was a little shaky back in those days. You know, today it obviously doesn't mean anything. But we didn't want to record it, uh, but they, uh, they told us, this is the song, we want you to do it. We went in and did record it. Uh, melodically, uh, the song is very nice. Musically, it's put together very well. The storyline, I just, we just didn't care for it. And because of that, uh, the song wasn't played too long on the air. They put it out, I think they uh, played it for maybe a week or two, and all of a sudden, uh, for some reason, we didn't know back then, but stopped playing it. And we found out uh, they thought the storyline was a little too hot for the airwaves. <laughs> Say that today. <laughs> This is going to be on DVD, okay? So if you're sitting with someone other than your girlfriend or your wife, get up now. Because <laughs> this is going to be on DVD. Yeah, you're going to be in trouble, okay? Give a listen, see what you think. <laughs> What you don't know is I'm true to only you. Tell me where does it stop? Does he know his married life is on the rocks? Now before you say you want me for the rest of your life, what are we gonna do about your husband? And what are we gonna do about my wife? to your side in the darkness where our faithfulness must hide knowing I'll forever take all the tears I put upon my children's face before I say I want you for the rest of my life Give her up. what are we gonna do about your Your husband, and I don't really want to hurt my wife. Don't hurt you. Oh, we better stop, stop, think it over, baby. Stop, stop. Oh, oh, oh. What are we gonna do now? You got to help me, girl. Let's see now. We're going to have this forever, right? This audience, this performance on DVD. Love it. We'll be able to watch it every weekend. Yes. Every audience seems like a new audience, although you still see the same faces sometimes, you know, but it's all fresh. I mean, these people, like, they light up when you're up there. And it's a good feeling. 
to know that you're doing something for them? I think the, the, uh, the people that are in it, the, our newest member, our newest member goes back 20 years, Jimmy Saw. Lou Jester came out of the uh, touring Jesus Christ Superstar group. Um, Marty came from a, a bunch of ensembles there. We've actually locked into each other in the mid-70s and stayed ever since. So we have the same group all those years. I hope that they uh, recognize us as uh, artists that uh, had created some uh, bit of music, you know, in a certain uh, t time uh, period that uh, they thought we were, you know, one of the elite groups of, of the time. That's why I felt about us. Uh, I guess uh, it's hard to, uh, to put into words. You know. All right, here we go. By uh, late 1968, record companies started to observe us at the Cheetah, and it was also an election year. You know, I think uh, every other week we would be representing the, the Democratic Party, you know, if they were coming in. Well, I think it was Eugene McCarthy was running, and McGovern and all those people. Uh, by, I'm going to guess, uh, October, we started recording. You know, we were all listening to uh, a Fifth Dimension album where the worst that could happen was on that album. Uh, Johnny or Mike or somebody had thought, you know, that'd be a nice song to do. And um, we asked the record company if, if we could record it. 
uh, I remember the actual recording session for the worst that could happen. Um, there was a pivotal moment in the in the session that um, I think is responsible for us having the hit record as opposed to the Fifth Dimension having the hit record. And that was when uh, a guy by the name of Artie Rip came into the session. Artie used to visit us, but Artie was this kind of uh, uh, hippie, cool, millionaire producer. I think he already uh, produced The Loving Spoonful. And um, Artie had asked Johnny if he thought that he could sing one particular phrase uh, in the song, if he could take the note in natural voice on the Fifth Dimension record, where it goes, a woman like you needs a house and a home, baby. If he... Well, Johnny, Billy uh, Williams sang it in false, so that's how Johnny was singing it. But it was kind of anticlimactic, you know, if, if you were looking in on it. So Artie asked Johnny if he could hit that note in natural voice. And, uh, you know, we put the lights down in, in Johnny's uh, vocal booth, and he just nailed it. Girl, I heard you're getting married. Heard you're getting married. This time you're really sure, and this is the end. They say you really mean it. This guy's the one that makes you feel so safe, so sane, and so secure.
Thank you, thank you. We love you too, also, you know. We love you. They're still here. <laughs> yes, we thank you so much. You're a great audience, and now we'll have you forever, right? We can always watch it. There you'll be. Whenever we're down and out, turn it on. There's our friends. Thank you so much. You know, this, uh, this world we live in is getting a little weird, a little crazy, right? Everybody's just flipping out, right? This must be a leftover LSD or something. But everyone is just going bananas. And uh, it's not a pleasant thing. You turn on the TV and what do you see? Nothing but bad things. We have a song now that uh, we'd like to perform for you. And it's a song that has a nice lyric. Okay, it was written way back, I believe in the 1940s. But if you listen to this lyric, it might help, okay? Just give a listen.
you so much for being such a great audience. We hope you had a good time. We did. Don't you go anywhere. Thank you again. We want to know all their names by introducing you to the gentleman who just performed that fantastic guitar solo for you. He's our lead guitarist. His name is Jimmy Sorrow. Say hi, Jimmy. Uh, and let's go over to the opposite side of the stage. All the keyboard work you've been hearing this evening, along with some vocals too, belong to a man who we call Marty. D'Amico, say hi, Marty. Hey, you're getting good. Love it. Let's go to the rear of the stage now. And there we find a guy who's been with us for, oh, more than 31 years. And before that, he was with the original American touring company of Jesus Christ Superstar. So would you please say hello on drums, Mr. Lou Ajesta. Say hi, you lose. Now we, we are proud to say that we have four original members here on the Brooklyn Bridge. I introduced you to two of them earlier, but I introduced them to you as former Del Sands. So I'd like to try that one more time. Only this time as original Brooklyn Bridge members. So one more time, if you will, let's hear it for Fred Farrar, one of our original members. Les Couchy, another original member. And right in the middle, from the very, very beginning, on bass guitar and vocals, let's hear it for Jim Rosica. Say hi, Jim. Ah, uh, he loves you too. Yes, he does. Let's see now. I think we've uh, just taken care of about oh, just no, about John. Oh, oh, no, John. Oh, John. Yeah. We forgot the most yeah, important John. person here on the stage. Right here. Hey! Woo! Whoa, Johnny. John. You okay? Did you hurt yourself, John?